بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى جميع إخوانه من النبيين والمرسلين وآل كل وصحب كل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and protect his nation from that which he fears for them. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us first have the proper intention in our hearts to attend the lesson for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the following chapter is very important and that concerns every male and female which is about clothes what is allowed for one to wear al qadi abu shuja mentioned here briefly by saying it is unlawful for men to wear silk or gold even a ring though both are permissible for women a small or large amount of gold with respect to unlawfulness are alike, meaning it's forbidden. If a portion of a garment is silk and another portion is cotton or linen, then it is permissible for men to wear it as long as the silk is not dominant. So that's in a brief. We'll talk about this in detail now, inshallah. The first thing he's mentioning here that it's forbidden for men to wear silk. And there are many types of silk, but they are all called silk, harir in Arabic. Al harir is the one extracted from the silkworm. And sometimes the worm makes the silk and exits and separates from it, from the cocoon, it separates from the cocoon while still alive. And they call this al-qaz. There is another type that is called al-ibraisam. And this type is the silk that is extracted from the silkworm, but when it's dead. So in both cases, we can call this harir. And that's the very soft fabric. The very soft fabric. It's a type of luxury. And it's suitable for women, not for men. And it does not befit men to be worn by them as it is suitable for women. For that reason, the Prophet wasallam forbade men from wearing silk, covering themselves with silk, even having a pillow covered with silk, or a mattress that is covered with silk, they cannot have this. This is a type of luxury life that one shouldn't be looking at. That's number one. Number two, it's something befitting woman. It doesn't befit, as they call it, the manhood. So that's why men are not allowed to use the silk in any of these types. And the proof for this is what Bukhari narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu forbade the companions from wearing silk and from sitting on it. However, wearing silk for ladies, for women, is permissible. And that is taken from another hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad and At-Tirmidhi where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam held the silk in one hand 
and the gold in another. And he said, these two, gold and silk, are forbidden for the males of this nation, permissible for the females. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ made it clear that men are not allowed to wear silk or gold. And that's an explicit text from the Prophet ﷺ indicating that such a thing is forbidden. Now, what about ladies? Can they have pillows covered with silk or mattress covered with silk other than wearing the clothes? Some scholars said it is still forbidden as it is for men. But wearing is something different. Wearing is something different and they excluded women from the prohibition of wearing silk. And they said they are allowed to wear silk but they don't have it as a mattress or put it on the ground as carpet and sit on it or to cover themselves with it. Now, when they say it's forbidden for men to wear silk, they say, except there is a case of necessity. The case of necessity, they assume that in extreme heat, what he cannot find anything to cover himself with to push the heat away except by wearing silk or in extreme cold what he couldn't find any alternative to wear other than the silk clothes also another reason if someone has a type of itchiness in his body Subhanallah, the silk is a type of fabric that would benefit for such a disease. If someone is itching in his body, he has a type of itchiness in his body, the silk benefits for that disease, takes it away. And that's why when some of the companions were suffering from this itchiness, and they ask the Prophet ﷺ about wearing silk and the Prophet allowed them to wear silk in that situation. So that's an atab of sickness or disease where they have the itchiness in their body and they are in need of wearing silk. So the Prophet allowed them to wear silk in that situation. Also when they say it's forbidden for men <coughs> to wear silk and gold, they are excluding the child that hasn't reached puberty. So, if he's not pubescent, they allow the guardian to close his son with silk clothes or clothes made of silk, if he's not pubescent and to allow the child to wear gold as well. Now because he's a child, so it doesn't contradict his character as a child when we say that in such a case he's imitating woman. But when you talk about men, yeah, it doesn't befit them to imitate women in wearing that type of clothes which is made of silk and wearing gold. But the child is allowed to wear them by the guardian. So he can let him wear clothes made of silk and as well to wear gold. Now with the exemption that the type of clothes he's wearing are not something that is specific for women. Because in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ cursed the man wearing the clothes 
specific for women and curse the woman in wearing the clothes of men which is specific for them and this is classified imitating the other gender in the way they dress and this is forbidden this is haram it's haram for men to imitate women in their clothes or any type of decoration to imitate them it's haram for women to imitate men as well the prophet sallallahu mentioned that in the hadith for the believer who thinks of the hereafter thinks of the day of judgment he thinks about doing something that he will be more accepted by allah azza wa jal that he will be more accepted by allah azza wa jal in the clothes as well if there is something specific for women then men are not allowed to wear the same there are some clothes that are known to be for females same if there is something that is specific for men then women are not allowed to wear them so we're not talking about the unisex what is called unisex it's used by both maybe let us say a t-shirt they call it unisex it can be worn by males and females that's a different story and some types of shoes could be unisex as well worn by both but there are other types that are specific either for men or women so men are not allowed to imitate women and women are not allowed to imitate men Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you in a full and complete image so for men to imitate women that's forbidden that's a major sin even you know how some men they mimic the voices of women that's forbidden as well so they are not allowed to talk as women talk so they cannot imitate in their actions as well some of them they walk like women they talk like women or they wear clothes like women that's haram so for men to do any of these whether imitating them in the way they talk or walk or clothes that's all haram that's all forbidden then he mentioned that a large amount or a small amount of gold with respect to unlaw unlawfulness are alike meaning if a man wears a little amount of gold like a ring that's forbidden if his ring is made of silver but he has engraved or a piece on top where they put a precious stone in it it's made of gold he's not allowed now the scholars talked about if a part of his body like for instance a portion of his finger got chopped off can he put a piece made of gold they said yes so just one it's like this portion of the finger but if he lost his whole finger he cannot put a finger made of gold if his nose is chopped off he can put a nose made of gold because one of the companions had his nose chopped off he replaced it with a nose made of silver it rotted and then he asked the prophet if he can swap it with one made of gold and the prophet allowed him because the gold is the purest is the purest mineral you could ever have out of all the minerals the purest is gold if one lost one of his teeth he can replace it with one made of gold and they don't have to take it off when he dies to say this is part of the inheritance no they can leave it on 
if he dies and he is having this, they can leave it on and bury him in that situation. The Prophet said, do not wear silk and do not drink with any container that is made of gold or silver. It's for them in this life and it's for you in the hereafter. In paradise, you know, the servants, al al Mukhalladun, will offer you drink in containers made of gold and silver. That's in paradise. But in this life, we are not allowed. So that's for men and women to have cups, utensils made of gold and silver. You know how some people to show they are living in a very luxurious life, they have spoons and forks and knives made of gold and silver. This is haram, this is forbidden, or cups. This is exaggeration. And that breaks the heart of the poor people. When they see them, look, he's eating with a golden spoon and that one is not finding a little piece of bread to eat. So that breaks their heart and that's forbidden. Even the scholars talked about having these utensils at home but not with the intention of using them, just keeping them. You know how some people say maybe one day they can smash them and sell them. Can they just keep them at home, store them? The scholars held two opinions regarding this man. Some said if they are not using them, they are allowed to keep them. But if they are using them, that's forbidden. Some scholars said regardless whether they're going to use them or not, it's forbidden. It's haram in both cases to have such type of utensils that are made of gold and silver. Now, then he talked about something important. Because some men might wear clothes, part of which is silk and the other part is something else. Could be cotton, could be linen, that's a type of fabric as well. So they are mixed, silk and something else. Can men wear them? We said women are allowed to wear silk. What about men? Can they wear clothes, part of which is silk and the other part is cotton or linen? The scholars gave this consideration. If the silk is not dominant, then they are allowed. Then they are allowed. They might have, you know, sometimes patches let us say clothes and they have some patches on it. Can they have patches made of silk? They said as long as it's not more than the width of four fingers. So it will be noticeable then. And they said, you know, for the slaves, they might have a portion at the end made of silk for the collar they make a portion made of silk. Yeah, if it is within the norm, within the norm, then it is not forbidden. Talk about men here. What about if it's 50-50? It's allowed for men to wear them. 50-50. And here the scholar said the consideration is by weight. So they check the weight of the silk and the weight of the other fabric. If the weight of the silk is dominant, then it is forbidden. But if it's not, it's not forbidden then. Umar radiallahu anhu as narrated by Imam Muslim said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade men to wear silk except what is equivalent to one two, three, or four fingers. 
that's when they have, as we mentioned, let us say, it's within the clothes. It doesn't go more than the width of four fingers when they are together. Now, the last thing we'd like to mention as well about the anklets ladies wear and they ask about this as well. Is it permissible for them to wear it that is made of gold? It is permissible as long as it doesn't reach a stage what it is classified as too much and this is exaggeration and a type of showing off and that's 200 misqal or dinar 200 dinar and that will be approximately 850 grams of pure gold. So less than one kilogram, less than one kilogram. So that would be classified as exaggeration and this is forbidden. But it doesn't reach that stage, it's not forbidden. As for the ayah, وَلَا يَضُرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنَّ This is not proof that wearing the anklets is forbidden in Islam. Rather, this ayah refers to some ladies who used to wear a short piece of garment that wouldn't cover the shin. So the shin is showing, let us say, that piece of garment up to the knees. Then they wore the anklets and as they walk by men, they hit the ground to make noise. Or they tinkle or it makes a sound. So men will be attracted to that sound. So they look and they see their legs from underneath. And this was practiced by some ladies in the past. So this ayah was revealed. وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ they should not hit the ground by their legs or feet. So that portion of the body that is not covered, which is the shin and underneath will be seen by men. That's a forbidden act that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. Because recently some were asking or maybe on some I don't know, messages they send and they say wearing the anklets for ladies is forbidden. No, it's not. It's not forbidden for ladies unless it reaches that stage of excessiveness which is classified as haram in that case. So it's very important that you equip yourself with the correct knowledge and Remain steadfast on it, that will be a protection for you. Will guard you, this knowledge will guard you wherever you go, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. And Allah knows best, we say La ilaha illallah three times.